own legacy. Um, I'm used to covering these type of events, but certainly not one that is completely unashamed of being unionist and oil. So I hope to learn something from this too. I do want to hear from the audience, I do want to raise participation. But first, I think we're going to start this end. And Murray, if you can just give us a, a few minutes of where you think we are in relation to this consultation. Well, I can report we've got an extra three weeks, this is just this afternoon, so there is three weeks for people to get it in. I have to say, I'm not, I'll openly say at the beginning, I'm not into the detail of it, like many here. People point out to me the aspects they think are wrong, and I usually agree with them. But it's very much, a, I'm more interested in the moral side of the thing and the personal side of the story. I just wonder about the whole legacy thing altogether. Is, is it, are people really going to get truth and justice at the end of it? I have to say they're not. They're not. There's been people here I know who went in 40 years for justice and truth. And yes, we can still pursue it, and the door needs to be kept open for it. But I don't think we're going to get it in the end, because things have been stacked against us. We had the old issue of the forensic laboratories being blown up for the deliberate reasons so all the evidence would be destroyed. With the decommission, all the weapons were destroyed, so there's been no evidence from them. And so the chances of someone coming forward and saying, I did that, I want to confess to it, are very slim. So I think, I think sometimes we people were playing what they can do for people. And um, that's nobody here I'm talking about here, but I've heard people say, we'll get you this and we'll get you that. I think we we'll have to be honest with people saying, it's very difficult to get those things. However, I do believe the door should be left open uh, for justice for people, even for that slim chance, even for the fact people will only spend two years in jail if even not, if, if they come forward or confess or whatever. I think we've concentrated on what the families need uh, and what they want uh, and what they've missed over these years. We're not going to replace a husband or a mother or a father or whoever it was was murdered. But those families have struggled. I've talked to people recently who were given uh, compensation at the time, uh, but it doesn't cover today. And I'm not making this all about money, but I think I would think we need to look after the living of those left behind and make sure their families aren't in any need. Uh, what's missing from this particular legacy thing is to do with those seriously injured. Again, those seriously injured were awarded money at the time and they weren't expected to live. We have people who had life-changing injuries who have lived for 25, 30 years. And I have to say, and I know it might be popular with some of the room, I'm talking about innocent victims here. I'm talking about the definition of victims needs to be clearly understood. Uh, and I would be talking about giving no family to self-injured, because I believe organisations looked after their own. Uh, and continue to do that. But with regard to uh, awards of money, I think those seriously injured should be assessed again to see what funds they need to support them. Uh, there's no proportionality in this. As a former member of the security forces, this is all about getting members of the security forces, uh, I believe, try to get them to court, or more importantly, discredit them. Because some of these systems will allow people to come forward and say whatever they want, and it won't be verified in any one way or the other. So it's a way to rewrite history. I think that's one of the biggest dangers of this legacy legislation, is that it rewrites history. Uh, the provosts were the heroes. They were the downtrodden people, and they saved everybody uh, from the work at British. And we were the work at British. Whether that was the state in the form of the uh, security forces, or whether that was the paramilitaries. We were all the bad guys. I've seen it happen after the, the loyalists, after the ceasefires, in that loyalists were being painted into Cornas where they became involved with the commission. Because the pros were the good guys, the pros the pro were all the bad guys. I think we're seeing the same thing again, only uh, uh, with the wider interpretation of the old Protestant and Unionist Lawyers Committee are being painted, or the potential being painted black. So I, there's others who know about the detail. In fact, we had FRPU came and talked to us within the institution, along with many other groups, and they're across the detail of this. Uh, but I don't think it's the detail we're looking for. It's a system where we don't allow Republicans to rewrite history, and it's a system that looks after living with the clause that there is a door open still if people can find justice.